Amen. You remember, <clears throat> there was a one fellow Dayton, I think his name was in the movie, who was the constant naysayer. Mm -hmm. uh, Moses in the movie was much more patient than I would have been. <laughs> <I> was, <laughs> but somebody stop that guy. Anymore. Amen. Uh, Amen. Um, and uh, quick side note, uh, and I'm done with this. Uh, total of 13 balance cast, all said Paul on them. Uh, Paul <laughs> Thank you. Now, in asking the Lord, <clears throat> Lord, what would you have me? What do you say? What do you say? And I thought the Lord would say, stand firm. And it is a word for us. And I think very much a word for me personally. But uh, again, I'll share it with you. <laughs> stand firm. Now we have played the, uh, the Ten Commandments clip. Uh, excuse me while I deal with my infirmities. There, now I'm going to have to go for the entire rest of the service with a, with a microphone. Doing that into the mic. Amen. And I gave you uh, that clip about <clears throat> Moses and the Ten Commandments because that's where we're going with the scripture. That's out of Exodus uh, chapter 14. And we will start with verse 9. Exodus chapter 14, starting in verse 9. The Egyptians, all Pharaoh's horses and chariots, horsemen and troops, pursued the Israelites and overtook them as they camped by the sea near Kaheroth, uh, yeah. opposite Baal Zephonus. As Pharaoh approached, the Israelites looked up, and there were the Egyptians marching after them. They were terrified and cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you brought us to the desert to die? That's one of the reasons I love that clip, because they, they, they said this in the line. Because there's no graves in Egypt, you brought us out here to die? I said, hey, that's right out of the scripture. <laughs> you know, and uh, again, what a terrible thing to say to Moses. The Moses, the guy that God raised up, the guy that God anointed. Uh, they saw all the plagues and the, the things that the, the Lord did to the, to the Egyptians to bring them out of Egypt with a mighty hand and all this wow. good stuff. But as soon as, it's just as soon as things start to look a little crazy, Verse 11, they said to the Moses, yeah. was it because there were, were no graves in Egypt that you brought us to the desert to die? What have you done to us by bringing us out of Egypt? Didn't we say to you in Egypt, leave us alone. Let us serve the Egyptians. It would, would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than die in the desert. Moses answered the people, do not be afraid, stand firm, and you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring to you. The Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. The Lord will fight for you. You need only be still. <clears throat> again, uh, I was, I was pleased as uh, Cecil B. DeMille as he did this big 
uh, <coughs> cinematic project here. He used this line out of the scripture. The Egyptians you see today, Moses said, you'll, you'll never see again. Amen. Now, I want you to look at verse 13, and I'm going to give it to you in the Amplified. We're reading from the NIV. This is the Amplified. Moses said to the people, fear not, stand still, firm, confident, and undismayed. That's a philosophy. Let me read it again. Stand still, stand firm, stand confident, and, and undismayed, and see the salvation of the Lord, of the Lord, which um, he will work for you today. For the Egyptians you have seen today, you shall never see again. And as I, as I look at that word, stand still, stand firm, again, that was... What I, what I heard the Lord saying as I was praying about this, stand firm. So, in this passage, where, where Moses says this to the people, I look up stand firm in the Hebrew, and it's throughout the Old, <coughs> excuse me, the Old Testament and the New. But this word in the, in the Old Testament, in the, in, in the Hebrew, it's the word uh, uh, yosad, and, and it means to stand, to confront, to take one's stand, to station oneself, take a firm stand. It has the sense of to, to present yourself at a location, be there. It means to take a firm position on something. It speaks of a soldier taking his place in the armed forces. And it is also used in resisting people by taking a stand against it. Take your stand. <coughs> Excuse me. Again, I think the Lord is saying, stand firm. And, and, and um, I heard this a lot. This, this, the, the theme came to me again and again through different means as, I, as I'm just looking to the Lord, the idea of standing firm, standing resolute. So, as the Lord would say, to, say this to us, stand firm, let me first say, stand firm. And then take the stand of faith. Paul says in the sixth chapter of Ephesians, he says, stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist and with the breastplate of righteousness in place. And with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Now, I'm sure you recognize this out of, again, out of the sixth chapter of Ephesians, that famous passage that talks about putting on the whole armor of God. And he starts with, stand firm then. Now, we are told to stand firmly in faith. What does that mean? Faith, stand, stand in faith. Faith in what? Okay, I think that's the per proper question. Uh, sometimes uh, we as Christians can just kind of fall into what I think is a trap of having, trying to have faith in faith. I believe, I believe, I believe. If you, uh, you're believing for a healing, well, be it done unto you as you believe. Oh, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. Just as hard as I can. Listen, have faith in Jesus. 
Yes. Okay. Let's not complicate this. This, again, falls to what, what the, old, the New Testament yeah. calls uh, the simplicity that is in Christ Jesus. It's simple. Have faith in Jesus. Faith in his goodness. Okay. For God so loved the world that he gave us only God the Son. Faith that he loves you. Faith that he makes the best decisions. There, there, there are things that happen to us or around us in our lives that we don't understand. And God has not called us to understand everything. But he has called us to trust him. See, that's having faith. Faith in his goodness, faith in his love for us. The devil will lie to us and say that, the, that God doesn't love us. Or God, God loves everybody, but he doesn't like you. Okay? And uh, unfortunately, that, that lie can be extremely effective if we're not liking ourselves at the moment. If you don't feel good about you, Fall to the good life. Have faith in Jesus. Have faith in his mercy. Have faith that he really does have your best interests at heart. Okay, let me say it again. Have faith that he really does have your best interests at heart. Take the stand of faith. And let me say, what goes right along with this stand of faith, take the stand of doctrine. Now, when I say doctrine, I'm not talking about some any specific denominational dogma. I am talking about the balance Word of God. What does the whole counsel of the Word of God say on a subject? Okay, then that's what you want. We base what we think and believe on the Word of God. Remember that when the, the biblical writer was writing under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, the Lord was saying something specific. Okay? Uh, when you read a passage in Scripture, it's not about, well, this means whatever it means to me. No, the biblical writer has something in particular to say. Uh, when he dictated that, and, um, or when he wrote that, and that's what it's saying. Take the stand of doctrine. Paul says to Timothy, Timothy is the, the young pastor um, in the church of Ephesus. And as Paul is, is writing letters, he wrote two to Timothy. And in 2 Timothy chapter 4, he writes, in the presence of God and of Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, and in view of his appearing and his kingdom. Well, he, that was quite a buildup. I give you this charge. As he is speaking as an apostle to this young brother who is the pastor of the church there. Preach the word. Hear the charge. Preach the word, be prepared in season and out of season. Correct, rebuke, and encourage with great patience and careful instruction. Now, I would ask the question, now, how could Timothy carry out his charge 
if he didn't take a stand it was true. Because remember, he's told to correct, correct those who are in error, rebuke, and so on and so forth, encourage. He had to take a stand on what was true. You see, that's where um, the Word of God becomes invaluable because it is the source on earth of what is true. Okay? We live, live in a culture that likes to say that there are no absolute truths. That's an absolute lie. There are absolute truths, for sure. What is true for you may not necessarily be true for me. Well, the one who made the universe said this is true. And if anybody says this isn't true, your options are to make your own universe where you can make all the rules or follow this. If you don't follow this, you're wrong. Truth, by definition, is exclusive, isn't it? Truth excludes everything that isn't true. So, Paul is talking to Timothy here. Verse 2, verse 3. For the time will come when men will not put up with sound doctrine. Instead, to suit their own desires, they will gather around them a great number of teachers to say what their itching ears want to hear. They will turn their ears away from the truth and aside to men. In this day and age, I guess in every day and age, but specifically in our time, we need to stand firm on sound doctrine. Because if you don't, the enemy will have you believe in all sorts of things. There are churches now that are saying that there's nothing wrong with being gay, and doing gay marriages. And, uh, you know, love gay people, let me say that. Love them. Um, they're not monsters. But God says, don't do that. Okay. So, if the Lord says repeatedly in Old Testament and New Testament, don't do that, then we should never say, oh, it's okay. And I just use that as one example. Know what the Bible has to say. Okay? Be students of the Word. Be students of the word. I, again, I, I love eSword um, in Bible software. It's free. And uh, you can get it online. Download it and have it on your computer. I use it all the time. Yes, yes, yes. Um, okay, let, let's do a quick little exercise. How many of you Things that um, we are no longer, we no longer have to obey any of the Old Testament laws. Show of hands. So you don't show any hands. So you think we do have to obey some of the Old Testament laws? Okay. Well, which ones do we obey? And which ones do we not obey? You know how to answer that question? <laughs> I think 
I, I question at this point, and you know how to answer that question, but you didn't raise it. Yeah. Okay, um, quickly, everybody say um, CCM. Say it again, CCM. Do you know what CCM stands for when it comes to Old Testament law? Uh, the Old Testament laws of Moses can be divided into three categories. That's with the CCM. The first C is civil, civil laws that governed uh, uh, everyday life uh, two and three thousand years ago. Okay, uh, everyday Jewish life. Uh, we're, we're, we're no longer bound by those civil laws. The second C is ceremonial, okay? Civil and ceremonial. And uh, we are no longer bound by those ceremonial laws. We do not achieve righteousness by uh, um, um, obeying those civil laws of washing and, and keeping little rituals and all that sort of stuff. Okay? That's done away with. And it's fulfilled in Christ. All of those things. The M stands for moral. Moral laws. We do have to obey the moral laws. They are timeless. They transcend from the Old Testament into New Testament and into everyday life. Okay? Uh, uh, nine of the Ten Commandments are moral laws. The, the other one that, that is a uh, ceremonial law about uh, keeping the Sabbath day, which is sundown Friday to sundown Saturday, okay? Uh, we don't have to keep the Jewish Sabbath. That's a ceremonial law. But the other nine are moral laws, aren't they? It's but, it, but, it, but it's the Old Testament law under Moses, Pastor Bill. Out of the book of Exodus. Yeah, but... Thou shalt not steal. It was wrong to steal back then. It's wrong to steal now. Okay, the Old Testament. Thou shalt do no murder. Written, thou shalt not kill. It was wrong to murder people back then. It's wrong to murder people now. Thou shalt not commit adultery. It's wrong for a married man to cheat on his wife back then. It's wrong now, and so on and so forth. And uh, all the, uh, the sexual guidelines in the Old Testament, those are moral laws too. Okay, enough of that. Moving right along. Okay, I, I uh, took the little sidetrack to say, be students of the word. Understand how to rightly divide the word of truth, and which is, again, another uh, thing that Paul said to Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 2, do your best to present yourself to God as one approved, a workman who does not need to be ashamed, and who correctly handles the word of truth. Not everyone correctly handles it. And that's where error comes in. And as error builds and, and does its thing, it just gives birth to plain old heresy. Paul t t tells Timothy again, 1 Timothy chapter 4, watch your life and doctrine closely. Persevere in them, because if you do, young pastor, young teacher, you will save both yourself and your hearers. Stand, and take the place of the, the, the stance of faith, the stance of doctrine, And the stance of love. Stand the place of love. Now this is important. Well, it's all important. But people, Jesus is coming. <coughs> he is. <coughs> Jesus is on his way. 
In the 24th chapter of Matthew, I'm sure you have read it, Jesus is talking with his disciples. And he's telling them how things are going to be. In the last days. And I firmly believe we are in the last days. Now, I've heard that all my life. But I see history. I see everyday news events. Um, ushering in the, the return of the Lord. Matthew chapter 24. We'll look at verse, we'll start at verse 3. Now, I'll, we'll go through this quickly as I get to the main point of the scripture, this passage. As Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately. Tell us, they said, when will this happen and what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? Okay, then again, get the question. What will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? Jesus says, watch out that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name claiming, I am the Christ, and will deceive many. <coughs> you will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, for the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of birth pains. Then you will be handed over to be persecuted and put to death. And you will be hated by all nations because of me. At that time, many will turn away from the faith and will betray and hate each other. And many false prophets will appear and deceive many people. Because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most, oh my goodness, the love of most will grow cold. But he who stands firm at the end will be saved. What are you afraid of? What's your greatest fear? Is it swimming off the beach in California and gets bit by a shark? <laughs> My dad was this big guy uh, the people respected him, and, and uh, I didn't. My my dad wasn't afraid of anything except mm -hmm. flying. You could not get that brother on an airplane. I'll share with you my biggest fear. That's it. Verse twelve. Because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will go cold. Not just the love of a whole lot of people, but the love of most will go cold. And that's my fear. My love growing cold. Because we all watch the news, okay? And you uh, see on the news how this guy at the gas station walks up to this, this other guy and, and shoots him just to take the chain off of his neck. It's, you know, stuff's been in the news lately. Or the girl is missing and they find her body uh, up on uh, a few blocks from here, you know, behind the house. And he, he wore a mask and went to the AT, ATM and took money out. Uh, and you think, why this dirty, no good so-and-so? And we see the crime around us. And you don't <coughs> want to live your life fearful. Sure. 
You want to be those who are open and who trust and love other people. But because of the increase of wickedness, we can tend to harden ourselves. Okay. Watch out for that. Watch out for that. Because we're called to stand in love. Without love, our walks with God are nothing. Apostle Paul said, if, 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 I, if I speak with the tongues of men and angels, but have not love, I'm just a noise maker, a, a, a clanging gong, a, a cymbal. This thing of, of love is, is huge. Now, the last of verse 13, mm -hmm. Jesus says, but he who stands firm to the end will be saved. Now, and he's talking about all of this, the crazy stuff that's coming during our lifetimes, the end of the age, because that's where we are. Jesus is coming. He said, when he says stand, stand firm, uh, uh, that's the Greek word hupermino. It means to remain. Isn't that simple? To remain, it means to persevere, to endure, and sustain. It means to, when Jesus says, he who stands firm to the end, it means to bear up under uh, and, or to suffer. as suffering a lot of miseries, adversities, and persecutions, and provocations, and do it all in faith. Faith in what? Jesus. Jesus. Faith in Jesus. There are crazy things in the news, Pastor Billy, yeah, but you keep your faith in Jesus. The Jesus who lives in you. The Jesus who provides for you. The Jesus who takes care of you. The Jesus who walks with you. But I just want blessing. I just want all the good stuff in my life. Just bless me, Lord. Bless me, bless me. Pour out blessing, blessing, blessing. For the Lord does bless us. I'm a blessed man. I see that it, uh, when it's cold outside and, and the snow is flying and I'm safe and warm in my little house over on Kenzie. That's a blessing. There are people out who are homeless. That's a blessing. When I have good food to eat on the table that my wife prepared. She was just trying to help me maintain my <laughs> beautiful physique. <laughs> I think about those people in Haiti where I went to Haiti back in 2012 who were very hungry. They're all thin. You didn't see any Haitian built like me. <laughs> One of them asked me, what kind of food do you eat in, in, in the United States that gives you a big abdomen? <laughs> gives you a big abdomen. It's not the kind of food, it's the quantity, brother. That's a lot. But I'm a blessed man. Yes. But you know, <clears throat> excuse me, as I see things on TV about uh, churches and they're promising everybody, oh, this is the year of God's great blessing and, and buy a Cadillac and, and a home in Bloomfield Hills and da 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 da. Okay. I say, oh my goodness. I wish
wish I could reach in the TV and just slap. <laughs> Don't you know how to handle the word of God? Don't set those people up for uh, uh, saying, God, what happened? You're supposed to bless me, bless me, bless me. But the Lord said, bear us and love them and love me anyway. Okay. And sometimes we have to weather the storm. But the Lord is with us. Amen. 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 <laughs> and not only is he with us, but he is in us. And that's my last slide as I bring this to a close. I found that so appropriate. Sometimes you just gotta bow your head, say a prayer, and wait for the storm. Because the Lord is with us. Now, this is not anything gloomy I'm talking about. Because it's good to have the Lord with you. And I have been through storms in my life. And the Lord was there. And I have discovered that the, the, that the storm doesn't last forever. Actually, it, 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 when you look back on it, it's usually for a fairly short duration. And you can look back on it and see how the Lord was bringing you through. How the Lord was on your side. How the Lord gave you, gave, um, gave you people to help you through this thing. And showed you favor. And, and people were amazed that you came through the unscathed. I was the ones that were hoping that you'd get hit hard. You know what I mean? But that's biblical, y'all. Okay? That's, that's who God is. And you remember the Bible stories we learned as children? Daniel in the lion's den? You know, it's a cute little story for kids. But Daniel had, by the time Daniel got thrown in the lion's den, he had served under many administrations of, of, of different uh, Babylonian kings. By the time he got to uh, serving under uh, Darius or Darius the Mede, he was an old man. And as an old man, to be thrown down into the lion's den, the pit, that they kept the lions in for the purpose of gruesome execution. They starved the lions, you know. Make sure that they're hungry so that when they put you down in there, the lions would jump in, tear you in a heartbeat. And not only did he get thrown the lions, but he had to be thrown down in there, the old man, you know. Could you just get a ladder maybe and lower him down? You gotta throw him all the way down there. <coughs> the Lord who blessed him. The Lord who loved him. The Lord who spoke to him and showed him mighty visions that are recorded to this day in the book of Daniel. Didn't stop that from happening to him. And here's the point. The Lord could have saved him from being thrown into the lion's den, but he didn't. He was just in the den with him. Okay. The Lord went into the lion's den with him. And although it was a crazy thing, when Daniel was standing on the edge of that den, and they were getting ready to throw him in, and the lions were, were just saying, oh, thank you, Jesus, for the food. Snarling and ah, come here quick, I'm hungry. The Lord kept him and went in with him. Okay. And uh, he was down there all night. The king was worried about it because the king got tricked into having thrown him. 
Early in the morning, the king went down there and said, Daniel, is the God that you serve, was he able to save you? Daniel said, live forever, okay. You know, he was cool. Good. Classic greeting to the king. The God who I serve shut their mouths. They have not harmed me. And they quickly pulled him out. Other little story that you've heard all your life. The three Hebrew children, no, they weren't kids. They were just young Israelites. Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. You probably know them by their Babylonian names. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. <laughs> they got thrown into the fiery furnace. You know the story. The king said, if you don't bow down to this gold statue of me, shame on you, Pookie. <laughs> and they, they refused to bow down. We're not going to bow. The God we serve is able to, to save us, even if he doesn't. We're not bowing. So throw them in. God could have stopped that from happening, but he was just with them in the fire. And they didn't get burned. The king thought he'd sit there and watch and watch him burn up and watch him scream in agony. And he said, wait a minute, wait a minute. How many guys did we throw in the fire? Three. But I see four in the fire now. And the fourth one, in, 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 in his pagan mind, and the fourth one looks like the son of the gods. Okay. And uh, then the king said, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the most high God. He changed his tune. Come out here. Everybody gathered around him and uh, said that their, uh, their clothes, uh, their, their hair, their beard, nothing wasn't singed. Um, their clothes wasn't burned, nor, nor was there the smell of smoke on them. Okay, and remember, the fire was so hot that the guys who ordered, who were ordered to throw them in, they got killed carrying out their orders because the fire was so hot. Sometimes you gotta bow your head and say a prayer and weather the storm. Oh, but you know, you serve a God who controls the storm. You serve a God who can quiet the storm. Stand firm. Let nothing move you. Jesus must be your Lord for you to stand firm, you know. You just can't stand firm on your own because you think you're that tough. <laughs> okay. Jesus has to be Lord. It's him living in you that, that enables you to stand firm. You can't play church and stand firm. Trust that he is your Lord. Let's pray right now. Father, we love you and we bless your name. We acknowledge you as the King of kings and Lord of lords. There is none like you, none above you, none beside you. You alone are the sovereign of the universe. We bless your name. Lord, help us to stand firm. Help us to stand firmly in faith. <clears throat> help us to stand firmly on your word. Help us to stand firmly in the place of love. Lord, because there are people who need to see the Jesus we know shining through us. 
Lord, may that you're, you're calling people to come and serve. You're calling people into the city, Lord, just like you called me into the city. I see you calling others. Help them, oh God, to stand in the place of sound doctrine and love and faith. Help them to stand firmly on your word and by the power of your Holy Spirit. Lord, now we thank you for what you're doing in our lives. Thank you for who you are to us. Thank you, Lord. We bless your name. We pray all of these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Um, come forward, we're going to dismiss.